on the last MakerCast we talked a little bit about maybe we should make more videos about us making mistakes so I want to share my latest one with you so a bit of backstory on a first last year I made a video about these displays Um, they're pretty cool they're kind of the ones from um, like big screens at a mall or whatever but it's just one section of it and you can use them with an ESP8266 and I'll link to that video up here so there was a couple of things that were a little bit awkward about using it so basically you had to connect a lot of pins up to uh, the input to the ESP8266 and then you needed to connect some of the pins from this input one to the output one and uh, yeah so there was a lot of jumper wires needed and also it, it was kind of awkward to power because you needed to provide quite a good bit of power to it I think it uses about four amps if it's fully on and uh, yeah so I, I made up this little board here to attach the power cables that came with it which are like these so one of them slots in here and then it has these little crimps on the end of them so I was plugging that into my screw terminals and yeah so at the time I kind of had a plan of maybe I could make a PCB around this but uh, I didn't know how to make PCBs at the time so this year I eventually got around to making one so I ordered one it arrived and uh, I put it together looks a little something like this so to connect it up you just dropped it in here you connected up your power supply or the cable that came with it for the power supply it went into these uh, screw terminals here and then you use the ribbon cable that also came with the displays plugged it into that and then you plugged it into the other connector and that was it fully wired up now you just need to drop a D1 mini into it and plug in a 5 volt power supply and that's it done and that was great that worked perfectly I was happy with it so I was like okay I'm gonna list it on Tindy now because why wouldn't I everything's working fine so two problems <laughs> arose from it and uh, they arose after I had sold uh, 10 of them so uh, first problem the very first person who got it took his uh, D1 Mini and he soldered it directly to the board and I thought this was an option for people to do um, I didn't see a problem with it I, I always use the header pins as kind of standoffs but I didn't think there'd be any issue with doing this but there is an issue with doing this the issue with doing this is very simple basically you can't plug in the USB cable because the PCB is in the way of the casing and it's the same for all of them so you can't really use the board with it directly soldered like this so that was okay not the best but it wasn't really the end of the world the first person who got it was in Europe so it got there within a few days and most other people who had ordered it were from the US so I sent out an email saying, hey, make sure you put them on the headers or else you won't be able to plug it into the board. And if you've already soldered it up, I'll send you a new one. Just let me know. But then another problem came up and uh, that one was less solvable. So the issue was that one of the pins or a few of the pins on the on the board boards are on the displays are optional so they're C, D and E in the picture shown here and so on this display here and it was the only one I had at the time of testing them it has all the pins it has C, D and E so the problem pin is E so E is D3 
which is that one there. And uh, you'll see this is ground. It is not connected to ground. So that's fine on this board. But this is another display that I got <laughs> since. Uh, it actually, it's just a coincidence that I got it um, since uh, the issue was discovered before I even got this. But it proves out the problem, at least. So if we take the same board and plug it in, we can test our E pin again. And now the E pin connects to ground. So it's D3 on the D1 is connected to the E pin, but the display itself is grounding it because it doesn't have the E pin. So the problem with that is, and this is something I knew, but I guess I didn't just put all the pieces together. So I knew the E pin was D3. And separately, I know D3 is GPIO pin 0. And separately, I also know that if you keep GPIO pin 0 low on the startup of a D1 mini or an ESP8266, rather, it puts it into flash mode, which means it doesn't boot your sketch. So for this display, when you power up your D1 mini, it's going to go straight into flash mode because it's grounding D3, but I just never put all those pieces together that E was connected to D3, which is GPIO pin 0, which would keep it low on boot up and cause a problem. So that's not solvable by sending out an email saying, hey, everybody, just put in your little jumper headers or whatever. That's a big problem because for people with displays like this one, which I never said it only works on the other ones, it's not going to work. I have to say I felt really bad about this because, as I mentioned, I had sold 10 of them and I had no idea if they were going to work okay for the people or not. So I had to send out another email, which I really didn't like doing. Um, just I, I don't really like using the contact email of Tindy at all, but uh, I didn't really feel like I had a choice. So I sent out another email saying, hey, I'm after redesigning the board, or here's the problem I have, I'm after designing a fix for it, and uh, I'll have it here on this date, and I'll let you know if it works okay, and I'll happily replace the board free of charge if... Uh, if you need it replaced, uh, I won't even ask for the first one back because what's the point? Um, so yeah. So the new one came and it had two changes to it. Uh, the first change was um, the little cutout here for the D1 Mini. Some would say it's not that little, but um, it did uh, solve the problem. So there's the board fully down, and here is a micro USB cable and it can plug perfectly fine into it. So that was the first problem solved. And then here is the completed board. So I added these little dip switches and uh, the text is pretty small. I don't know why I made them so small, but uh, underneath them, you can see C, D, and E, and uh, so when the switches are up, it's making a connection to those pins, but if you flick the switch down, it breaks that connection, so you're able to solve this issue here. So this is it plugged in, I have the E switch down, so even though the, even though the E pin is grounded, D3 is no longer grounded because the switch is down. But if I flick that switch up, D3 is grounded again, which would cause the problem. So yeah, uh, it's a fix for the problem. Um, wish I didn't run into the problem at all. I guess 
maybe I could have been a bit more careful with designing the problem and looking into... Like, I knew if the CD or E pin wasn't available that it would ground that pin, and maybe I should have just looked into a bit more what are the consequences of the displays where this is grounded. Um, I kind of didn't realize they were as prevalent as they were. But, yeah, so... If you bought one of the original ones, you got an email off me saying that I'll replace it. That offer still stands. Any ones that I sell from now on will be the version 1.1 that has the dip switch and the notch for the micro USB. So hopefully that's the last of the problems with it. But uh, yeah, just thought it might be interesting to share that uh, this was one of the biggest mistakes I've made. Um, like, I make mistakes all the time, uh, including wiring diagrams, including in the original video for these displays, I made a mistake with the wiring diagram. But it's a different dynamic when you're selling something. I just felt so responsible for it, and uh, yeah, did not feel good about it whatsoever. So glad that this works, and I can start putting the problem behind me. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know in the comments below. And if not, I'll see you next time. Thank you.